Hello everyone, welcome back to Garden Fever. Today I got another exciting episode for you. Today we're going to go over the Chlorophytum camosum. What is that? Gotta love those scientific names. It's better known as the spider plant, which is a very, very common household plant. And it's common because it's one of the easiest to grow. Probably a second to pathos. Some people think maybe even easier than pathos. I uh, think the pathos is easier, but it's really irrelevant because they're both extremely easy. Very easy to propagate, very easy to take care of. Um, so I recommend it for beginner people that are trying to just start out with house plants. It's a wonderful house plant, and uh, there's lots of reasons why. Let's get into it, figure out how to grow them, and make this world a paradise, one yard at a time. Let's go. All right, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to, to one of many of my spider plants. Um, I have several of them, and I have several for a lot of reasons. One, they're incredibly easy to propagate, uh, even easier than the pathos in some ways. Um, two, according to NASA's Clean Air Study, it ranks very high on uh, being able to filter out things like formaldehyde and various uh, things. So it's actually a very good plant for filtering the air in your home. So it's a good plant to grow, uh, other than just its aesthetic beauty. Uh, two, they, great, they grow great indoors. They grow great in containers. In fact, they grow very well in containers, so well that uh, with plastic pots, it can even burst them with the roots, and the plant could be fine. They have very little problems, very few insect problems, and pest problems. Uh, I've ignored them, and I've treated them well, and they almost always survive unless I completely neglect them and just ignore them for months and months and months. Um, so I really enjoy this plant. It's very easy. I always recommend this plant to beginners because um, there's very little things that they can do to, to kill it. So um, with that, we'll get into ways, you know, some of its conditions that it needs to, to grow well. I want to make it very clear, though, that uh, this plant can take some abuse and I'm going to give you the more optimal things for a very vibrant healthy spider plant but you don't necessarily have to treat it with these exact instructions for you to enjoy it most people just plant it water it every once in a while and that's just about it and that's about all you need to do and it'll be fine um, they don't like direct sunlight they're native to South Africa um, it's kind of a, I wouldn't say a shade plant, but it's a, it's a ground cover type plant in its natural environment. They can be grown in zones 9 to 11 outdoors. Um, oftentimes they'll drape over walls and structures, and a lot of people that grow them outdoors like that because it gives it kind of a waterfall effect. They're very easy to propagate, and they do it through little spiderets, which is kind of like that. Um, it grows these long stems and they will bloom white flowers and after the flowers get done blooming they oftentimes will turn into little spiderettes. Now to propagate it you can just set that in a pot next to it and water it until it roots and then sever this stem uh, from the mother plant when, when it's kind of rooted and then it will take off. I don't even think that's necessary. I just clip them, stick them in there, just keep them well watered for a little while and voila, you got another spider plant. And as you can see, the potential for very many plants is very much there. Can't really see this, maybe I'll show an up clock, but it's even grown somewhat of air roots just hanging right there. So it's a very easy plant to grow. I recommend it. It filters the air. It ranks very high on NASA's clean air study. So I recommend it. Um, very pretty. It doesn't like to have its roots sit in water. That's one thing you do need to, to know. It does have to drain. However, like the pathos, when you first start it, when it's this small and you're, you can stick it in water and let it root that way, it can live in that, just like the pathos, aka devil, devil's ivy, and it'll root. However, you'll get the more vibrant green, the, the white stripes, they'll be very, you know, very healthy looking in soil better than water. And that's one reason why I think this is number two on the easiest to grow because the pathos, you can just stick it in water and it can live there forever, basically. Um, some of the pests that it has is um, 
scale bugs, sometimes the leaves will get sticky. And that's usually because scale bugs are draining some of the moisture out of it, poking little holes in it and leaving residue. And that's part of the problem. They're not incredibly like infested with them. It's not something that's a common problem, but it can happen. Same with spider mites and whatnot. You can easily get rid of that with a soap bath. Um, if you look under the leaves, there'll be little brown spotches. That's a good sign of scale bugs. All you gotta do is wipe them down with an alcohol once. It's very time consuming as you can see all these leaves. So what I prefer to do is use a neem oil. Uh, mist it on the top and make sure you get the bottom. A lot of the pests will hide under the bottom of the leaves. It's kind of their way of sheltering from the elements in, in the natural, in the wild, if you will. One of the problems also is brown leaf tips. This is very, very common with them. In fact, it's probably the most common problem you're going to run into when you grow these. And there's several things that can cause that. Uh, uh, Overwatering, over fertilizing, but the, the majority, depending on where you live, but the majority of the reasons why is a buildup in salts. Uh, salts in the water. And that happens because we treat our water. And like I said, it depends where you live, but it, you can almost get rid of it just by collecting rainwater or filtered water. One of the reasons why it happens so common in homes is because they we're putting fluoride in our water. So I'm not doing a video on that, but one of the cause and effects of that when it comes to this particular plant is it tends to build up salts in the soil. So filter out the fluoride, rainwater will help get rid of that or help prevent that. Or you can just put it in a shower and run cool water off of it onto it and just, just flush it until all the salts are flushed through and then let it dry out and don't water it again until it, it dries out. It prefers to you know, water out, water through, dry, water through, dry. That is the, the best way to water it. Let's see, what else can I tell you about this? Oftentimes the under leaves will brown and that's due to lack of sun. You can either compost this back into the soil or pull them off to make them look better. It's inevitable. It's nothing to be alarmed about. In the winter time, I've noticed that it happens more often. Spring, just like in nature, is, is a time for new growth. You get new leaves, new sprouts, you'll get flowers if, the, if you're treating it good, and you'll get little spiderettes. But when it cool, the temperature's cool, there's less sun, you, you'll get some, some leaves that will die. This isn't anything to worry about unless you're getting a huge amount of them all at once. Then it's something to be concerned about. Something happened that caused that. Um, they don't like direct sunlight. However, I have had them in direct sunlight for you know periods of time, like an hour or so as the sun passed through, and mine did fine. I imagine if you're growing them outside and it, it is direct sunlight with, with full heat, you can, you can easily burn them. So that's another thing you need to be prepared for. Um, my kids are actually the most destructive. Um, they're very good with pets. They're non-toxic to pets, which makes it another good house plant because the pathos is actually poisonous to both kids and pets. If they eat a ton of it, they'll get an irritated stomach. But if they just munch on some leaves here and there, it's not gonna do much to your pets. So that's another good reason. And I wanted to give an example of damage from my kids. This side faces my window. This side faces my kids. Now I know it leans obviously to that, but it's very obvious that my kids have is damaged this plant to the point where it doesn't want to grow here. So with that being said, um, if there's any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always here. I love, I love the comments. I love talking. I like to learn. Um, if you know something about this plant, maybe something I didn't bring out, please, please mention it. Um, it. Oh, one other thing that I just remembered by saying that is, unlike the pathos, this actually can, can withstand a little bit colder of temperatures. It prefers 50 degrees to 70 degrees. Most homes are in the range of 65 to, like, let's say, 72, 75, for people that really like heat. Uh, it loves humidity, too. So, really dry environments that are over you know over the 70s can can strain it it'll probably still survive but it'll it'll be strained it won't be super healthy so the most optimal conditions are in those range or in, the, in that range anyway this is Corey the fever 
with another video on the spider plant. I encourage everybody to grow it for, for air filtering reasons, for beauty reasons. It's safe for pets and kids, although your kids may destroy it like mine. Uh, like, share, subscribe. More to come. We'll see you then.